This is John Cole with DiscountJuicers.com. Today we have another exciting episode for you. In this episode, we're going to answer the question once and for all, is there BPA in Omega Juicers? I know this question comes up a lot, and it is very hard to find the specific answer to this question. So I'm literally taking it out of the horse's mouth. Uh, this is the former president of Omega who wrote this in January 2020. Unfortunately, the uh, president, the former president, is no longer with Omega. I had a long-standing, like, 20-year relationship with the president. He's no longer with the company, and that saddens me a little bit, and I hope that the company improves in their customer service, which is a whole different topic that I'm not going to just get into or discuss in this episode. Okay, so the question is, because I get this question a lot, so I'm just going to be able to refer people to this video. Are Omega Juicers BPA free? And before I get into the answer, you know, also in this video, besides talking about are Omega Juicers BPA free, we're going to talk about other brand juicers and their BPA declaration, or if they have one. Also, I'm going to show you guys the juicers we sell at Discount Juicers, um, you know, that may be safer if you are concerned about the BPA and other uh, toxins that can leach out of plastic, right? Um, I know some of you guys are really concerned about this, and some of you guys aren't as concerned. And for those of you guys that have an interest in this topic, that's why I'm making this video. Now, the first thing I want to say is check yourself, right? If you guys regularly buy <laughs> plastic bottled water and drink it, in my personal opinion, although you guys can think what you want, drinking water out of a plastic bottle that's been sitting in there for a year or two, even several months, is far worse than putting some produce in your in your juicer that's made out of plastic parts. It goes into the juicer, it drops in, it gets crushed up, it gets squeezed out, the juice comes out, and then the pulp is out of it, and hopefully you're using a glass collection cup, uh, which is what I'll talk about at the end of this video, how to minimize your exposure and risk to the plastic in your juicer should you purchase one. Okay, so literally there's minimal contact time. Furthermore, if you guys still eat canned foods, and I don't care if it's a USDA organic canned food, this happens to be organic young jackfruit, a good meat substitute for people that are vegan. <laughs> but nonetheless, um, the cans, although they are metal, they have a BPA lining inside there, which is not, you know, which is BPA, which in most cases, juices of this day and age don't contain the BPA in my personal opinion, and I'll explain more about that in a little bit as well. Furthermore, another point that I want to mention that actually not many people are aware about is that if you are getting receipts when you check out at the grocery store, whether it's from Costco as this receipt is, or other grocery stores, most stores these days use basically thermal imaging paper, which is actually coated in BPA. And for myself personally, I'm far more concerned about the coating with the BPA and me touching it because that's direct human contact that now goes right into me. You know, they've done studies and testing on cashiers that are touching these receipts all day, and I don't think it, they don't look, the studies to me don't look too good. So I strive to actually not take receipts unless I must save it because it is something that is, you know, that I, I need the receipt for. Normally I just tell the cashier I don't need the receipt. That way they get to deal with it and I don't, and I honestly believe that, you know, places should offer an email receipt so that they don't have to print out anything. You know, so you're still getting your receipts, touching it all the time. You know, that would, con I, I'm more concerned about touching the receipts <laughs> than I am with the plastic, some of the plastic content in my, in some of the juicers, but it depends what juicer you get. And uh, anyways, let's read the statement from Omega. So the question is, are Omega juicers BPA free? We use BPA free materials in as many parts as we can. This means the plastic used has zero BPA in the raw material. Problem is, there are not always strong enough, they are not always strong enough for the juicing process. The auger, which I will take out right here, the auger and screens are made of GE Ultim, which is a petroleum-based product, meaning it has BPA in the raw material used when making these parts. 
Luckily, the plastic extrusion process is done under extreme pressure and at high heat. This transforms the finished product so it is less likely to leach BPA into the juice. Additionally, when you hear of BPA and the need for BPA-free products, it is normally referring to containers and other items that have long contact with your end product and or are used under high heat with your end product. Examples, spring water in a plastic bottle, microwave containers. Each of these give the chance for leaching as the items are in contact for a very long time or in contact during a heating process. Since the juicing process does not happen under high heat and the juice is not in contact with the parts except for a few seconds, this is not an issue. All of the testing we have seen in the past shows that there is no BPA leaching into the juice under normal juicing conditions. Alright, so that is the statement from Omega. And many years ago, and this was many years ago, I was sent from some of the manufacturers of the juicers the data that showed the BPA testing on you know juice after they juiced uh, with it with a juicer probably similar to this one and it showed like zero contamination of the juice now here's the thing <laughs> they only tested for BPA and BPA is only one of the many I don't even know how many toxins can leach from plastic so there are potentially other ones, and I'm not the scientist who tests all this stuff or knows about it. But, you know, here's, here's my, my, my personal thoughts are that, you know, once again, minimal food contact time. It's not done under heat, right? More important. And I, for, that re for those reasons, I think that it's perfectly safe to do. a matter of fact, this is the juicer that I use today, the Omega VSJ843. And I made literally two and a quarter gallons or two gallons of juice with this juicer today. I already drank one of them and I, and I, and I stored the other ones uh, for later in the week. Check the link down below if you haven't seen that video where I share with you guys how you can literally in one hour juice for a whole week of juice and have it stored in your fridge to save it the freshest way possible under vacuum. So yeah, the, and I'll have tips at the end of this episode how to minimize the contact time, uh, you know, of the juicer parts and to just, you know, and other tips so you guys could be even more safe if you are concerned. So the next thing I want to do is actually want to go ahead and get, get some other juicers here up for you guys to talk to you guys about their BPA because this is Omega's official or was Omega's official statement, which I do not believe changed with the new management because as far as I'm aware, the materials that they're using in the juicers have been pretty much stable for Omega now. They found the materials that work right, that are the BPA free as much as possible aside from the auger and the screen, and that's what they continue to use across the different factories that they manufacture in. But other companies may use uh, different materials, so let's find out some of the safest juicers out there. So the next thing I want to talk about for you guys is actually some of the safer juicers out there at discount juicers and these are the ones that I might recommend to you right um, I really love how try this basically is uh, you know basically telling it like it is and so instead of claiming like no BPA or BPA free which is really easy to say but I mean really if you started testing the plastic is there gonna be some BPA in the auger in the screen because most Korean made juicers use the same Altum auger and Altum screen. Now, I cannot say the same for the Chinese juicers that, you know, in my opinion, have zero regulation. And in China, I think they're just trying to like make some kind of junk products personally in many cases and sell it to you. And as long as they sell it the first time, they don't know you after you bought it because they already got your money. And so I'm really concerned about the parts in Chinese juicers in a video I'll post a link down below why you probably shouldn't buy a juicer from China I mean I'm pretty much confident that in the juicer that I was using in that video it was basically stamped PC which stands for polycarbonate which does contain BPA BPA although it may have it may have had a BPA free statement on the advertising right also it said FDA approved and FDA does not approve juicer products nor should the company be using the FDA logo that's a whole different discussion topic that's why I covered it in the video down below that being said Tribest has a more legitimate policy and their 
what they say is that their slow star juicer and other juicers that use a similar, similar, similar material are virtually BPA free. What is virtually BPA free? Well, it means it has almost zero BPA. And if you test the juice coming out of it, much like the Omega statement, it probably would be not have any BPA in the juice because once again, this is the Altum, um, you know, extruded under high heat and high pressure. Uh, furthermore, you're not heating the juice, um, you know, when you're putting it through here and, you know, under heat and long contact time, you know, that could be problematic. So, you know, I, I trust the Tribest products more, do their more authentic, in my personal opinion, statement. Other manufacturers from uh, Korea may claim no BPA free, but, you know, I don't think that's as accurate as it could be because really if you started testing products and you have the crazy lab testing the parts, you know, they may detect really small amounts of BPA, but I'm not, I don't really know for sure, but I ha from the testing I've seen, it doesn't go into your juice. So I'll say that one more time. Now a better Tribest product than the Slow Star that is virtually BPA free, Tribest will advertise the Green Star Pro as BPA free because it's not made with the same alt material, right? This is totally a different animal. And the re one of the reasons why I like the Green Star Pro, and this is the professional model, is because if we take this apart here, you guys can see um, these gears are 100% stainless steel. So as your produce is being juiced, it's being juiced by 100% stainless steel gears. Now, of course, there's plastic parts that the gears are enclosed in. And unlike manufacturers of other juicers that may use a Triton copolymer, which is a BPA-free, it's advertised as such, um, or the Ultim, this uses nylon which is a whole different kind of, you know, plastic altogether. If I even say plastic, it's more of a polyamide, I think. But nonetheless, nylon is supposed to be safer because it doesn't leach, or, or, or so it's said. So, you know, I believe this to be even a safer option for the BPA if you're concerned with, like, one of the uh, vertical juicers. Number one, because, I mean, number one, the, as the produce is being crushed and squeezed, it's 100% stainless steel gears, and then you have the safer nylon material now even probably from a plastic standpoint even a safer version a juicer is the pure juicer right the pure juicer uses very high quality stainless steel first as a grinding stage if we open this uh, grinding attachment up here you can see 100 percent stainless steel blade you have 100 percent stainless steel screen right there that in this first step you basically grind up the produce and it's spit out into your own provided collection container. I always use a glass con collection container to do that. And then all you simply do is you put the your the pulp that was created and generated into a press cloth. As far as I'm aware, this is a nylon press cloth. So, you know, it basically have the same, uh, you know, food contact as this nylon. And it's uh, been fully uh, vetted to be a food safe nylon. And then you basically press this between a stainless steel tray and the stainless steel top. So this is all stainless steel with a little bit of nylon contact as your juice is being pressed, which maybe lasts for about 90 seconds. But other than that, all the parts on the pure juicer are 100% stainless steel. So, so, oh, and then the other thing is the nylon tends to stain pretty good. <laughs> as you can see, I got the turmeric stains in there because I usually use this machine for my turmeric, ginger, rosemary, ginseng, lemon shots. In the last part of this episode, actually I want to get into some of the specific situations that can cause plastic to leach as according to some of the science out there, all right? And this doesn't always happen in the juicers, okay? Uh, number one reason for plastic leaching is high heat, right? If you're using plastic in a microwave, that's a big no-no in my personal opinion. Fortunately enough, in juicers, you're juicing cold produce, so this should not be an issue. Okay, uh, second thing, the reason why plastic can leach is if you're using it with fats. Fats somehow react with the plastic and can literally pull out um, toxins. So, I mean, if you're buying olive oil in plastic bottles, I'm more concerned about you buying plastic bottles of olive oil that has literally fat in a plastic bottle than using a juicer that has minimal contact time because the oil has been sitting in there for a long time. So buy your oil the old fashioned way. I mean, you should come in like tins, you know, or even better yet in glass, okay? Third reason why plastics can leach 
is because of acid. You know, acids can leach things, etch things, all kinds of things. And so the challenge with juicers specifically is if you're juicing things like lemons and limes. You know, if you're doing that, then you might want to immediately balance it out with something that's more base, like put some lemons and limes, like I was juicing lemons and limes earlier, but then after every lemon or lime, I'd put a carrot or a piece of jicama or a beet that has a, a higher, um, you know, pH. And then that would more balance out the acid so that the acid would basically be nullified for the most part. And also when I drink it, I'm not drinking a super acid juice. Now the other situation that may cause premature leaching is exposure to UV, right? Um, UV is like the sun or maybe you have a UV sterilizer these days during the COVID era, um, you know. And so exposure to UV may break down the plastics and then cause them to leach. So what does this mean? This means don't store your juicer in the sunlight or in the sun. You know, store it out of the sun. Maybe get a cover for it if you're super ultra concerned about this topic. So now I want to get into my tips on how to minimize the risk when juicing based on some of the things that I've shared with you guys to know so far and what I know personally. And more importantly, what I do in my actual life because I am drinking juice every day. Actually, well, we'll get into the juice I'm drinking uh, in a little bit, but I'm drinking juice every day and I'm juicing almost every day, at least every other day I am juicing, you know, usually anywhere from a half gallon to two gallons a day, literally every day is different. Today I made my root juice with different kinds of roots, including carrots, beets, jicama, lemons and limes, pineapples and apples, and some uh, cabbage. And then yesterday's juice was basically jicama with red grapes, and actually that was quite a good juice. But anyways, let's go ahead and show you guys how to minimize your risk. Number one, don't dishwash your juicer. Very important. I do not recommend dishwashing your juicer just because, you know, the dishwasher can degrade the plastic, cause it to break down faster, even melt your parts like I have done in the past. Do not do it, right? Also, the other problem with the dishwasher is because of the high heat. If even if you're not juicing in the in the juicer parts, if you put your plastic parts under the high heat, the high heat can degrade the plastic and cause the plasticizers or toxins that come out next time use it in my personal opinion you know so that is not advised don't dishwash your juicer number two i talked about this previously but if you're juicing acid foods and acids are known to break down plastics cause leaching to occur immediately follow it with something more base so if you're juicing something like lemons hey if you juice some broccoli or juice some kale right after that and don't put a whole lemon in at once i cut a lemon like into half and then into half again and then into like half of that again and then have little bits so I put a little bit in so it's like a little bit of acid and then I cram it well I don't cram it but I, I, I juice you know other things like jicama and carrots and greens after it to basically kind of balance out the pH. Number three to minimize the contact time very important I see a lot of people on YouTube doing this and I do not advocate this whatsoever and this is yet another reason why you should not do this is use the spout cap to mix your juices. So when, if you see me juicing, I am always juicing and this spout cap is open. So when I put the produce in, it gets juiced and instantly it comes out of the juicer. So there's less contact time with the plastic parts. People that are not into this stuff, into their health, you know, oh, I'm just gonna close this because that's what I see the manufacturer do on the videos. And it looks really cool with stuff mixing in there. Well, it does two things really. Number one, in my opinion, and based on my testing, and I have a video on this, because the juice is swimming in the pulp that's now coming out, your pulp has become a little bit wetter and your juice will not be as high of a yield. Maybe just by a little bit, but every little bit matters in my personal opinion. Plus, because of the wipers are running around, you're also aerating the juice more. And now, knowing what I know about the BPA leaching, now you have more contact time, not that anything's gonna happen in that contact time, but let's minimize that by leaving your spout cap open. Fourth tip to minimize plastic contact is to chuck <laughs> literally the plastic containers that come with the juicer. Most juicers these days, aside from a very few, come with plastic catch cups. These are actually the catch cups from the Slow Star Juicer. Now, while these are BPA free, um, you know, I actually don't like to use these. Sometimes you'll see me use this to catch the pulp, which then I don't necessarily eat, goes into my compost, and once again, there's minimal contact time, and it's more of a solid, so I think things don't leach as easily if it's a solid than if it's a juice, personally. Um, 
but most of the time I don't actually use this and actually you will rarely if ever see me use these catch cups when I catch my juice the exception might be the Breville because the Breville blows the juice all over the table if you don't use a specific catch cup that is designed to like funnel the juice into the container and not over your table because all the air that's being blown into the juice so what I use is I use glass collection cups you know I found a couple that work really well this is an anchor hawking um, two uh, liter or eight cup or two quart measuring uh, cup uh, dealy and you can get this at a local big box store near you the Pyrex one also works although I like the anchor hawking seems to be a little more durable and this is the one I always use now if you want something that's not as big because you don't juice as much and you don't like it more dainty this is actually another option I found and actually you could get another one of these to catch the pulp even too because it fits really nicely it's almost the same exact height as a uh, as standard catch cups, so this will work on most standard juicers such as the Omega verticals, even the Kuvings verticals for the most part, although it might be a little bit, sh a little bit tall for the Kuvings ones. Um, but it pretty much works on most juicers, and it's actually just a, a four cup or one quart or one liter uh, uh, measuring cup from Ikea. That being said, I will give you fair warning, if you are a Butterfingers, don't get this. I've already broken like four of these because the glass is super thin on this, which is kind of nice because it's like one of those scientific beakers, but is not heavy duty whatsoever. I mean, I was cleaning with a brush, the brush hit it wrong and poof, the bottom dropped out. I'm like, oh my God, these things are almost disposable, but at least they're glass. That's the reason why I like this guy the most. This is really thick, pla thick, thick glass that's also basically probably heat treated, so it's really quite durable. And uh, I don't think I've broken one of these unless it was actually because I dropped it completely, all right? Now, the cool thing to know is on the Green Star Elite and the Green Star Pro, Trivest is known all along that they made these for people that may be concerned about the plastic leaching issue. And that's why they use nylon, which in my opinion is a more expensive material. And that's one of the reasons why this juicer costs more because they're using more expensive materials and... They also include a glass catch cup to catch your juice. You still will need to provide a catch cup or a bowl or a pot or a pan to catch the pulp coming out, but they provide you a nice glass catch cup uh, measured up to 700 cc, so it's a bit smaller. Um, in general, I also find that uh, one 1,000 milliliter or one quart uh, glass measuring cup, and I like to use the one by Pyrex because the Anchor Hawking one doesn't fit, the one from uh, Pyrex will fit under this and it actually will hold more. So I'll, I will often use that under the Green Star Pro to catch my juice. Fifth tip is after you're done juicing, don't just store your juice that you may have caught in the plastic collection jug in a reused plastic bottle or any other kind of plastic bottle. Plastic is inherent in people's kitchens and for the most part I've gotten rid of all plastic kind of bowls and plates and cups in my personal kitchen replacing it with real glass you know I don't use plastic utensils actually I have titanium utensils which is a whole different topic altogether um, and so you want to store your juices in glass you know in a recent episode best juicing accessories link is down below to that video I promoted the uh, Sands vacuum bottle so this is a glass bottle uh, one liter size they have other sizes that may be available and this is really cool because literally what this is is pops up and now you can basically pump this down and now you can basically set the oxygen out of your juice so it stores fresher longer. Of course, I have other ways I could do that just in a standard mason jar, but this makes it quick and easy for those of you guys that don't want to invest in all these mason jars and these different tops and all these different pumps and all this stuff. This is a one-stop and you're done solution. Um, actually, link is down below to the video. Watch that video. And actually, I have a coupon code there to save you guys 25% off if you guys get a Sands uh, jar, any of the different sizes they have. These are completely amazing. I love these for ease and simplicity and to go -ness, right? Of course, I personally use the majority of the time I store my juices in glass mason jars. They may, it may be hard to find due to the pandemic. People have been canning and jarring things more. And actually, this is my... Uh, mason jar with my current juice and actually it's purple look at that purple juice what this is this is malbar spinach berries juice with pineapple and then i added in sugarcane juice and also pomegranate juice so this is like high super antioxidant purple anthocyanin beta cyanin rich mm. and i have the sugarcane in there to balance out the acid of the pineapple which does a number of my teeth personally 
But yeah, that stuff's delicious. So I store all my juices in glass. And I want you guys to store your juices in glass as well. I want you guys to minimize your plastic contact time as much as possible. And of course, everybody's different. You may watch this video and think I'm a full of it and still store your stuff in plastic. And that's your total right, right? I'm just showing you guys what I do in case you want to, you know, be a little more safer and be a little bit more concerned and minimize your plastic exposure. Now, the other thing I would like to say is that there are plenty of plant foods that can protect you uh, from some of the estrogenic effects from the plastics actually that's one of the problems with the plastics is that they their hormone disruptors or like estrogen like compounds that can wreak havoc literally in our bodies but then there are things like soy and flax that maybe uh, you know have protective properties in them should you be eating those as well as I would like to say that in my personal opinion the plant foods inc including really rich pigmented plants whether it's green, purple, orange, yellow, whatever, there are a whole host of different phytochemicals and phytonutrients, especially the anthocyanins, the purple color, that may help our bodies to detox. You know, there's, there's different properties in greens that help our liver to detox, going to stage two detoxification. And this is one of the benefits of juicing. If you just simply don't juice because, oh, the juicer has plastic, I'm not gonna do it, then you'll never get the benefits from the properties in the fruits and vegetables that are in a very easy to assimilate way and a way that you could concentrate them higher than you can normally get by just eating the vegetables alone you know especially in this day and age when there are toxins all around us you know once again you know I, I personally am more concerned about somebody holding up a cell phone to their ear and talking on it to their friend for five ten minutes you know I'm more concerned about that than I am with using a juicer that has some plastic parts but you know you guys do your own research and you guys you know may have different views and that's fine I'm just showing you guys my personal opinions in this episode and my personal beliefs you know my goal is to actually not use a cell phone I do own one and you will rarely ever even find me on a cell phone if it is to save my life then I will be on the cell phone but other than that I, I will not be on a cell phone I believe it is not a good thing to do personally the last tip I want to share with you guys that I can think of is, I alluded to this and mentioned it earlier, is because UV has also been shown to degrade and break down plastics and allow the leaching to occur. I don't want you guys to store your juice in the sun. I mean, for most of us, this isn't an issue because, you know, like I have a galley kitchen that has no windows in it, so my juicers aren't anywhere near the sun, although I sometimes do juice outside in the sun. Um, don't store your juicers for any particular long length of time in the sun or in direct sun. Like if you have a sunny window, you know, hey, move the juicer out of the direct sunlight so that it's not getting direct UV uh, contact, you know. And this is probably an extra bonus tip and some of the other tips are way more important. But, you know, once again, I want you guys to be safe instead of sorry. And, you know, as an independent retailer of juicers and also somebody who has been personally juicing since 1985, and also selling juicers since 1998 and actually into my health. I got into this from my dietary changes and into health in 1995 because I almost lost my life. You know, I want to share with you guys the best tips that I've learned across the years, all right? And why do I do this? Well, I want to create a better world for everybody based on some of the knowledge that I've learned that now I can disseminate and share with you guys. And if you guys appreciate the knowledge that I drop on you, literally, I would encourage you guys to support me and my work. And the way you could do that is to make your purchase at discountjuicers.com. Now, I will admit the website is a little bit old and outdated, but it's still 100% functional and 100% safe to place your order on. And that allows me to continue to make these educational videos, which actually are more important to me than updating my website, which I might get more business. You know, I feel I feel that the people that are going to support me are going to support me. And if they're going to complain that my website's too old, you know, I'm glad to give them a call and take their order over the phone. Um, you know, but I appreciate your guys' support so I can continue my mission to make a difference in the world and to continue to put out good informational videos because big manufacturers, you know, even other juice retailers are not going to have the information that I have on the plastic in the juicers that I share with you guys today. So I hope my information is valuable and I hope that you will support me so I can continue my work. I really love what I do. I love sharing with you guys this information that I've learned and I love to make a difference in the planet and I hope I am doing that and your support is greatly appreciated. So I wanna thank you guys in advance who will support me and I wanna thank you guys who have supported me in the past. You are appreciated and I also wanna thank you guys for any referrals. If you have a friend or a neighbor that's looking for a juicer, Hey, say that guy John at Discount Juicers. You know he's the guy you should you should buy your juicer from. Like he's he's solid. 
he's honest, you know, he tells it like it is, and he gives me all the information I need to make the best decision so that you can change your life for the better. If you guys appreciated this episode, hey, please be sure to give this video a thumbs up. More importantly, be sure to share this video with somebody else so that they can learn the truth about the plastics in the juicers and my personal opinions and how to, you know, minimize some of the risk that may be out there. Um, also, be sure to click that subscribe button right down below. You never know where I'll show up or what you'll be learning on my YouTube channel, what new two juicers I'll be dropping on you or actually what new juicing information. I got some videos, some really cool videos coming up for you guys. I got the blend tech vacuum blending solution uh, videos coming up pretty soon i also have a video on yes there is fiber in juice <laughs> despite what some vegan doctors and you know paleo doctors say and all this stuff um that's gonna be a really good episode based around science and some journal published studies uh, so yeah make sure you click the subscribe button and click the little bell to get notified as my new videos come out and finally, be sure to check my past episodes. My past episodes are all our wealth of knowledge. Over 500 episodes at this time on this YouTube channel dedicated to teach you guys all about the different juicers, comparing the different juicers, giving you guys my insight and tips on how to juice successfully, as well as other appliances such as vacuum blenders and even some dehydrators so that you can process and eat more fresh fruits and vegetables in the best way possible to preserve the most nutrients. So with that, my name is John Kohler with DiscountJuicers.com. Be sure to visit DiscountJuicers.com slash YouTube for special promotional offers for our YouTube visitors.